Maybe Caitlin Clark not playing for Team USA at the Olympics was a blessing in disguise after all, because in her first WNBA game back since the restart, she had one of the best games of her WNBA career. She heard all the disrespect, not only from Diana who told her reality is coming, but from the Mercury social media page that said they'd rather have the six time gold medalist. Reality is coming. You look superhuman playing against 18 year olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. I'm taking Paige. Next question. So you get the number one pick this year, you would take Paige over Caitlin? Absolutely. I'd like to know if they agree with that after this game, because reality has arrived, and that's that Caitlin Clark is probably the best point guard in the WNBA, and Diana Taurasi learned that the hard way, as you're about to see in this video. First play of the game, Aaliyah Boston picking up where she left off in mid-season form, chases down the missed three from Mitchell and puts the first points on the board for Indiana. On this play, all three of the Fever's All-Stars are in on the action, Clark entry pass to Boston in the post, she scans over her left shoulder, back door, bounce pass to a cutting Mitchell across the baseline, who reverses it in with the offhand. Right here, the two-man chemistry between Clark and Boston is on full display. Watch how Clark stalls, giving Boston time to get inside. She throws a bounce pass round the outstretched Griner and Boston lays it in off the glass. Great start for the Fever, forcing the Mercury into a timeout. Finally, Phoenix gets something going. When all else fails, give it to the 6'9 Griner. She rises over the defense and knocks down a fadeaway towards the baseline over two defenders. Speaking of shooting over defenders, watch Caitlyn here come around the screen from Nalissa and let fire from NBA range, knocking down her first free ball of the game. And it's always a bad sign when Caitlyn has it going from deep early on. Kalia Copper showing here why she was so important for Team USA in the Olympic final, picking up where she left off in Paris hits a jumper from the elbow off the dribble. She's such a good defensive player but she can't defend Caitlin Clark, who dances with her on the perimeter, spins inside, gets to the goal, is fouled and scores for the and one and of course she converts at the line for the three point play. Caitlin was doing it all early on, watch her probe the defence and split the defence in two with a sizzling bounce pass to Smith under the basket for a layup. Diana Tarosi, the six time Olympic gold medalist, finally gets in on the action. Right here, spins by Boston to get to the cup and lays it in off the glass beautifully. But the older Phoenix can't keep up with the youth and pace of Indiana. As Clark races down the floor, goes right by Griner, is slapped in the face, but still gets another three point play the old fashioned way. That's 10 points for number 22, and we're not even halfway through the first quarter. And watch the gravity here from Caitlin. Clark. She knows the attention she brings defensively and Sophie Cunningham is face guarding her at half court. Clark knows if she drops back and waits, her team are going to have a 4 on 3 advantage. Following the Boston screen, Lou Samuelson takes advantage, catches Tarouzi sleeping on the cut from Smith, and that's another easy two for the Fever. See, it's the little things that don't show up in the box score that prove just how advanced Caitlin Clark is for her age. Despite number 22 taking a seat on the bench, the Fever maintain their fast-paced style. Watch Mitchell take it coast to coast here, pull up for a jumper in the mid-range, and then knocks down her first free ball of the game, and there she is again, top of the key with Copper, Mitch puts the ball on the floor, steps back, launches and scores. That's 10 first quarter points for Kelsey Mitchell and the Fever are running away with it early on. The quarter ends with who else? Caitlin Clark out for revenge, deep catch and shoot three and the Indiana Fever take a 19 point lead. Clark with 13 points in the first quarter. Copper hits a midi at the buzzer but it doesn't really matter because her team trails by 17 points and Caitlin Clark's Fever are on fire. She starts the second how she ended the first with another free ball from the same spot. That's three triples from Caitlin early on. She's up to 16 points, absolutely out of this world play from the soon to be rookie of the year. With all the scoring and the three balls, I almost forgot she's the WNBA's assist leader. Watch her pick out Nalissa Smith in transition with a bullet pass. She finishes through contact and won. Fever lead 41-18. This is annihilation in Indianapolis. 
and it goes from bad to worse for Phoenix, because Clark doesn't slow down, another bullet pass to Kelsey Mitchell for the layup, this girl could find a needle in a haystack, I'd say that's one of her best passes of the year, but she has that many of them I'm losing track. Even Erica Wheeler is knocking down threes in this game, Fever's lead now up to 28 points and we're not even halfway through the second quarter yet. Finally, the Mercury gets something and it's 42 year old Diana Tarouzi who comes off the screen and knocks down a massive free ball to cut the lead to just 25 points. Everybody is eating good in Indiana this game. Melissa Smith from the pass from Clark muscles her way down low and makes a tough shot over Sophie Cunningham. With that made basket, she became the third Fever player to score in double figures. Make that four as Erica Wheeler turns the corner and dumps it off to Boston at the precise moment, taking her points tally up to 10 before the half. Indiana dominating Phoenix inside with 26 to 2 points in the paint. Credit the Fever's defense, but there's no excuse for Phoenix scoring just 2 points in the paint, especially when they have the tallest player on the court. Quietly though, Phoenix started to gain a bit of momentum. Natasha Cloud hit back to back free balls, and then Diana Tarouzi again, this time from the corner, makes it 9 quick points for the Mercury, and this little 11 to 2 run here becomes important later on. You'll see why if you stay tuned and watch to the the end. The first half ends Fever lead 54 to 37, but that first half right there might be the best basketball the Fever have played all season. Everything we talked about in this video right here, about the team playing too slow and not to Caitlin's strengths, the complete opposite happened. Caitlin was allowed to play like her Iowa self at a fast pace, they were outrunning the older Phoenix and taking advantage of their youth. Clark was amazing, 16 points, 4 rebounds and 5 assists in the first half for her. Boston, Mitchell and Smith all contributed, scoring over 10 points each. But it all started with Caitlin, she's the catalyst getting everybody involved. And when that 3 point shot of hers is falling, there's really nobody in the W who can stop her. The third quarter starts and here's when things get interesting. Phoenix immediately address what would have been a huge point of emphasis at halftime, and that's to get easy points in the paint. Kalia Copper does just that, dribble handoff with Tarouzi straight across the baseline for the score. Then Tarouzi one on one with Caitlin, doesn't want the smoke, instead finds Griner inside who scores and won, and all of a sudden Indiana's once 28 point lead is cut to just 12, with over a half of hoops still to play. But there's no room for complacency here, as Phoenix continue to apply pressure. Griner's hook shot in the lane is good, and it's a single digit game. 3 minutes into the third and the Fever have yet to score a field goal, and it's a 26-7 Phoenix run. What is going on? Coming out of a timeout, Indiana needed a boost and they got it. Kelsey Mitchell steps up from the corner and drains it to give the Fever some breathing room. 15 points so far for her. Diana Tarouzi proving that she's not entirely washed after her tragic performance individually in Paris. She nicely fakes the pass to Griner on the drive, steps through traffic and finishes downhill. And then again another Olympian, Kalia Copper. She's been guarded by the smaller Mitchell, that's a mismatch, uses the screen from Griner and cans another foul line jump shot. But anything Kelsey Mitchell gives up on defense, she can give you right back on offense, and she hits a ridiculous rainbow free ball over the Natasha clouds and into the hoop. What a shot from Mitchell, who in this third quarter was the only player keeping the Fever's now delicate lead alive. And here things get heated. Kelsey Mitchell and Natasha Cloud get up in each other's faces, tensions are boiling over, some words were exchanged, some light shoving, but the situation quickly de-escalates as enough bodies swarm onto the court to separate them. One thing that this shows was that the game was getting intense, and that was going to make for a great second half. The game restarts, Copper drawing attention on the drive, kicks to an open Sophie Cunningham in the corner, who hits the catch and shoot free, and then again another Phoenix free ball from the same spot and it's a 4 point game. The Fever have fallen apart in this third quarter. Everything they did well in the first half, they did the complete opposite in the third, and the older more experienced Mercury were taking full advantage to get themselves back in the ball game. Copper gets to the line, makes both and cuts the lead to 2. And then her again, Kalia Copper from the corner sinks it, and the Mercury take the lead. From down 28 they have their noses back in front, an incredible comeback. Christy Sides has to do something. She just sat back and watched her team fall apart in real time and did nothing about it. 
finally the Fever gets something as Lexi Hall answers back with a free ball to restore their lead. But Natasha Cloud is on fire for Phoenix and drills a big one from the top of the key over her friend Caitlin Clark. She's up to 14 points with 4 free balls in the game. Under a minute to go in the third, Caitlin Clark, well aware of the shot clock, gets one up quickly from the mid range and the shooter's role is friendly. This was her first field goal of the second half. Indiana need her to step up big in the fourth if they want to win this game. If the Fever get a stop on this play, they'll have a 2 for 1 opportunity thanks to Clark. They get the stop and with the game clock winding down, Clark finds Lou Samuelson top of the key and she hits a massive three ball at the buzzer. Strong finish to the quarter from Indiana, who were completely outplayed for 9 minutes but go into the fourth up 8 points. They got their act together at the right time and restored their lead. But they were relying heavily on the big four in this game, with 62 of their 73 points through three quarters being scored by those four. In order to win this game, they're going to need more help from their role players. The fourth quarter starts with a few scoreless possessions and there she is again. Clark crosses into the screen from Boston. Going left, her signature shot launches from deep and delivers. First three of the half for Caitlin. It's a big one and the Fever are back up 10. It's almost like Caitlin Clark decided her team was not going to lose this game. Watch here, she lets fire from deep. The ball bounces in slow motion off the top of the backboard and in. Incredible shot from Caitlin, and although it didn't count, it shows how locked in she is in this fourth quarter. But Phoenix won't go away, and Indiana keeps sleeping on that right corner, and this time Tarousey wide open punishes them for leaving her open and cuts the lead back to five points. Ball in Clark's hands, they go to the pick and roll, Clark doubled, still finds the bounce pass into Boston and she's too big and too strong for Tarousey down low and gets the layup to go. Natasha Cloud, 1-on-1 -on -one with Caitlin, waits for the screen, spins, shot clock winding down and her fadeaway midi right at the bell is good and it's a 6 point game with just over 6 minutes to go. Clark identifies Mitchell in the corner, picks her out over the defence and Kelsey Mitchell hits another and the fever back up 9. Time for somebody to take over and there she is. Mitchell from the inbound fancies herself in a foot race with Cunningham, blows by her into the lane, Griner's late to rotate and Mitchell scoops it in off the glass to put the fever back up double digits. And she doesn't stop there. Clark sets up the offence, waits for the help from Cloud, then passes it off at the perfect time to Mitchell. Locked in from deep, she nails another. That's 26 in the game for Kelsey Mitchell as the fever take a big step towards the finish line up 13 points with just over 4 minutes to go. But this game was not over just yet. Cunningham answers right back with a free of her own. Scoring is good but they need stops and they don't get one as Clark one on one with Sophie Cunningham. She can't stay in front of CC so Clark drives right down the lane and scores with the right handed finger roll. Under 3 minutes to go, Phoenix need something big and they need it fast. Natasha Cloud gives them just that with a free ball from the top of the key to cut the lead to within single digits. 19 points in the game for her, doing everything she can on both ends to keep Phoenix alive. As we know from Paris, Kalia Copper has the clutch gene and we're seeing it here. Massive free ball right there from the left side over Caitlin to make it a 6 point game. What a performance from Copper with 30 points and 8 rebounds and 6 assists with just over 2 minutes to go in the 4th. And in a game like this, anything can happen. But Lexi Hall gets those 3 points right back left unattended in the left corner and it seems every time the Mercury get within striking distance, somebody from the Fever steps up. This time it was Lexi Hall who hit a massive shot. Just over a minute to go, biggest possession of the game, Fever up 7. Clark patiently drains clock, waits for the screen, turns the corner round Griner and instead of forcing up a shot, sees Mitchell cutting in the corner of her eye, dishes it off and Mitchell, full head of steam, has the composure to finish and with a minute to go, Fever up 9, that should do it. Copper and Clark exchange free throws, another two on the board for 22 and that'll do it right there. Indiana made this incredibly hard for themselves, they led by as many as 28 points, Phoenix made the comeback, even took the lead, but the Fever showed their character and saw out the late push and crunch time. They got a massive victory in the first WNBA game back, making huge strides towards making the playoffs. Caitlin Clark incredible performance, she had a double double, 29 points, 10 
rebounds and 5 assists. With this double-double she broke the record for most double-doubles from a rookie in a season. She made 4 free balls in this game, but she couldn't have done it without Mitchell who was huge too. The Fever's backcourt combined for 10 free balls. For the Mercury, Copper led all scorers in the game with 32. Cloud had 19, Tarouzi had 16, but they left Indianapolis humbled. And Caitlin Clark is now 4-0 against Diana Tarouzi in the WNBA, as well as the two other Olympians on that team. Anybody who says she shouldn't have been on that Team USA roster is just lying out of their backside. The Rookie of the Year talk is over with. Clark is clearly the Rookie of the Year, and what we really should be asking ourselves now is if Caitlin Clark is the best point guard in the WNBA, because she's looking that good every game. And the scary part is, she keeps getting better and better all the time. Massive win for the Indiana Fever, they're the 7th seed, started the restart off with a win. They can really make some noise in the second half of the season, and I think they're not only going to make the playoffs, but could even make a deep run playing like this. But what do you guys think? Has Diana Tarosi officially been humbled by Caitlin Clark? Let me know your thoughts and feedback down below in the comments. Is Caitlin Clark already the best point guard in the WNBA? If you've made it up to this point in the video and enjoyed, I'm sure you'll enjoy this WNBA video in the middle of your screen, so click that to watch that. And on that note, it's DKM signing out. Until next time, and peace.